Hello, my name's Glenn Bradley. I'm Head of Flight Operations at the United Kingdom Civil Aviation Authority. I'm very pleased to be introducing this video we've created to educate on the risks of required navigation performance approaches. As you may be aware, we issued a safety notice on this back in 2019, and there's also been a recent high-profile event in Paris which has highlighted some of the risks around incorrect setting of the QNH. Therefore, we've decided to put this video together to show and demonstrate some of the risks of these type of approaches if they're not mitigated correctly. There's three main points we want to get across with this video. One is around the potential risks that pilots need to be aware of and what procedures they need to adopt to mitigate that risk. The second one is for operators to understand the potential risks and mitigate them by the procedures incorporated in their operations manuals. And the third thing is to educate around the protections provided the, by the ground proximity warning system and potential lack of protections. I'll hand you over now to Alex and I hope you uh, enjoy the following video. Glenn, thank you very much indeed and uh, welcome everybody to the 787 simulator. My colleague on the flight deck is Captain Ash Thomas and my name's Alex Rattray. We're both flight ops and training inspectors at the UK CAA and we're here today to talk about the threat of controlled flight in terrain on uh, Barrow VNAV 3D approaches and on 2D approaches. Even though we're in a 787 simulator, I want to stress that this is a generic video because this threat applies right across all aircraft types and we're going to talk about why that's such a threat and how it may be mitigated and we'll fly some approaches to show you the sort of things you need to be looking at. So we're now on the final approach track for the RNP approach for runway 27 right at Paris. We're indicating 5,000 feet and we have 1011 hectopascal set. Now, it's always worth bearing in mind here that that is a setting that is incorrect, but for whatever reason it is incorrect. As we go down this approach, the barrow altimeter will exactly match the expected altitude we should be getting at each distance check. So, Checking the barrow against distance doesn't help guard against this threat. Another thing to be really careful about is the fact that the entire instrumentation looks extremely correct. So let's look, for example, at the flight mode enunciator. So in this case, we've got speed, final approach course, and glide path. Now that's what we'd expect to see. We've got what we think is the correct altimeter, and we've got altitudes that seem correct against uh, distance. So let's just check nine miles as the next altitude. And even though this approach is nigh on 300 feet below the corrector profile, we'll be able to illustrate just how correct everything looks at this stage of the approach with the wrong Q&H. The RADALT is the only independent source of height above the ground that's going to help you discern if the barrow information you've got is truly correct. Radio altimeter. Okay, so the radar has come live now, 2,500 feet. However, it's showing just about 3,000 feet. And for the terrain we're in, approaching Paris, that is too early. So on this particular approach, 27 right at Paris, we're down below 2,000 radio now, and we're passing 2,600 feet barrow. Now that doesn't seem right, but let's look how how it draws us in. So flight mode enunciators look correct. The correct approach has been selected. It looks exactly on profile. And the uh, radio altitude, did that radio, uh, what was the altitude at six miles there, uh, Ash, was that correct? 2360 showing on profile. Right, so it was showing on profile. So we're now, everything's indicating that this approach is absolutely correct. For flying these approaches, one wouldn't routinely look at the rad out. However, 1, for good practice, it's good to incorporate the rad out because as we'll, Ash and I will show you, any type of aircraft is going to fly into the ground on one of these approaches and it won't necessarily give you a pull-up warning. OK, we're passing a 1,000 feet barrow now, but yeah, we've got 300 on the radio altimeter. That is definitely not right. However, if that radio altimeter isn't in your scan, Five, you wouldn't notice it. We're in visual conditions at the moment, above. so we're 50 above decision altitude. We're in visual conditions. Inside. We've got low, four terrain. reds, Too low, and terrain. that's 50 radio Too low, now. Terrain. 30. 
so the takeaway from that is there was absolutely no pull-up warning and that's not peculiar to this aircraft that's the problem right across aeroplanes at the moment and that's the thing we need to guard against